<sighs> and drop in to your body. See if you can get down from here and take another breath and come a little deeper, maybe into your heart center. And then close your eyes and just let your body soften. And take another breath and drop into your belly and just let the sounds in this room and in the room behind us be like the waves on the ocean or breeze through the trees or a thunderstorm in the distance. Just part of the sound, the natural sounds of the world as we are. <sighs> Bringing your awareness into the area where you're sitting, where your feet are on the floor, where your back is on the chair. And then just let your neck relax. <sighs> the top of your head float up. Feeling your arms get a little heavy and your legs relax. Your toes relax. And letting your body just be. And letting your mind just be quiet and open. And feeling that space between your brain and your mind as open and empty as a beautiful blue sky so that you are at peace. So the fluidness and softness of your body moves into that place where we are empty and awake in our mind. And with that, we can drop into our hearts and we can have a conversation without words between our minds and our hearts. And they connect. And they balance each other. Where our intuition and our body intelligence come together in conversation, in balance, and for the highest good of you, the human, the soul container moving forward in your life. And feel this moment some gratitude for that. After standing in the long line of receiving a human soul, here you are together in this beautiful soup of today, all of you adding a delicious ingredient, being a part of this family, being a part of the greater family, all one consciousness, all one beautiful heart, all one face of the divine. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. You're seeing a process that involves the pineal and intuition. And it's specialized. That is to say, this process has been the one my partner has practiced for 20 years. You might even say it is a steady stream of intuitive thought that becomes linearized by the corporeal human brain and delivered by the three-dimensional human. That is the channeling that you hear. That is the process that allows my partner to literally step aside. The part of him that steps aside would be the 3D consciousness, the part that used to say, I cannot do this. 
And through practice, it has become second nature. It's also become second nature for him not to worry about what the message will be and is he ready or prepared to deliver it. And that is what synchronicity and co-creation is for you. That you would put aside the minutia, that would ask the questions, that really have no answers at the time you ask them. There is a statement, you don't know what you don't know. And so how can any of you possibly proceed in life and walk out of this room when you don't know what you don't know? And the answer is, the answer is through the faith and the trust in that part that does know. That's the answer. In this brief channeling, I want to present to you the concepts of going where you don't know. We have talked about and given my partner the information about an evolving human being. And the human being evolves in all departments. There are those who would say that spiritual evolution will create a different kind of human being where other parts of the human will diminish. And that is not the exact way. The only thing, dear ones, that's going to diminish is fear. <laughs> For as you start your spiritual evolution, which we are going to speak of in just a moment, all of the other parts of the body will be in full cooperation. And I say it for this recording, I say it for this room, that that which you have counted on all your lives, which you call the human brain, the corporeal computer, the one that generates such a good job for you, is going to be enhanced. When you start developing the intuitive brain, and the body innate starts to awaken and function better, that which is the human brain is going to celebrate before this is what has been missing. Your brain knows this. It also knows what is not functioning. We spoke today with my partner about the innate body, the one you have to communicate with, with muscle testing. And the missing bridge that is there, that should be there, that would connect you, that corporeal you, the consciousness you, with a smart body you. So you will know what a medical intuitive would know. What's going on at every level with your body. And you'd know in time to do something about the things that develop that are sometimes a mystery to you. But that is just the beginning, dear one. There is so much to start to discuss about the cooperative energy of the human body when you do simple things with intent. Spiritual evolution is the human being starting to awaken to a greater possibility of reality. Human beings, they want to compartmentalize everything. It's a safety valve. Isn't it true? You don't want to go home to your house and find that everything is moved <laughs> by itself. <laughs> it would be disconcerting. Even if every piece of furniture had small little legs that could run around by itself, you would instruct the furniture, please stay in one place until I get home. <laughs> because you don't like change. If it's anything that you would say, I, I really enjoy, it would be the sameness, consistency of everything around you. You want to cook a meal and get the same result every time you cook that meal with that same recipe. And what if it didn't work that way? What if it was a surprise every time? <laughs> You wouldn't like that. 
This is the human brain in survival. You would think it's your comfort zone, it's human nature. I'll tell you, that's only today. That's only today. I want to give some invitations. I want to show you how some things work. I would like to open the belief box even, even further. You will know who I'm talking to in the room as I, as I give you some of the metaphors that, that present themselves. The first one is I'm going to call the tree of belief. A human being finds a belief system and they invest in it and they invest their energy, their time. They talk to others. They would perhaps assemble if that's part of the belief system. They would sing songs if that's part of the belief system. They would look at a historical prophet if that's part of the belief system or not. Whatever it is, through a period of time, they build a box for themselves. And that box becomes so beautiful and so comfortable. And the box becomes truth. And all of this leads them to the love of God. And there's no judgment and there's no fault in this. Whatever is your path that leads you to that place where you understand that you are part of the creative source is a good path. But suddenly you're faced with something else, an evolving human spirit. Consider this path that you put the box in, a tree. And as you've climbed that tree, it is given back to you. The fruit of the tree is love. The fruit of the tree is healing and solace. And the fruit of that tree has put you in a place where you say, this is the good tree. And you know it in your heart because it truly represents the love of God. But the human spirit is starting to get bigger. And what is going to start happening will frustrate some. And others will embrace it. And that is the possibility that there are other truth trees in the forest. <laughs> and that the roots of the trees are all connected to the same source. And someone will come along and say, I have got my tree. Would you join me for a moment on my tree? And the human being in an old energy will say, no, because my tree is truth. And I don't know about your tree. I am more comfortable because I have consistency and sameness and the love of God feels good in my tree. And so you will turn, they will turn their back on the invitation to look around. This is starting to change. I would like to make a statement that the cry and work is not here to pull anyone out of their faith. It is here to combine the faiths. To have those who are in certain tree and saying there is no other tree and I'm afraid to look around and I don't believe anything out of my tree will have the ability to look at yours and they won't see the protocol as being what they want. They will see the love of God in your tree. And they may never come over to it, but they won't condemn it. Instead, they will say, I see that you have accomplished what I have accomplished in your own way. God bless you for your tree. And there'll come a day when perhaps they would venture to yours just to look around and to sample the energy before they go back to theirs. <laughs> but in all fairness, they have broached something they never thought they would. This happened to my partner. He, was, he didn't have to deny any faith in God that he had. All he had to do was make it bigger. <laughs> and he discovered there's a forest of truth. And that every single culture has the, the, the way about it in order to get to their particular tree. 
Now, spiritual evolution is going to create children who will not stay in the tree, they're told. And that is the difference. There may be some listening to me here at another time, wanting to hear what Kryon has to say about their belief. And I'll say it again. Listener, stay with your belief if it serves you and you love God. Look carefully if the rules around your belief are exclusive or inclusive because the creative source does not exclude anyone ever. The rules may be man-made. Look at it and discern it. Don't throw it away. Make it bigger. Make it work for you. Make the love of God grander and not exclusionary. If there is a rule that says the other is wrong, look at it carefully. Because God never said that. Ever. Find spirit any way you can and join the family of worship knowing that you are part of the whole, that God is good, and there is a plan. That's all that's expected. And each of you then will have the ability in your own way, on any tree you want to, to change this planet and create peace on earth. And that's the truth. There are some of you who may even be in this room who are having trouble bridging the gap between old esoteric information and new esoteric information. You are holding on to what worked for you in an older energy. And I don't blame you. Again, the consistency of what you had is your solace. You could go back to it, and you always got the same reaction. You don't want the furniture moving around when you're, when you're not there. And spiritually, you don't, want it, you don't want things changing. You want to be able to go back to premises that you learned when you started this. And now I'm coming along and giving you options that might even void those premises. Do you understand, dear one, that when you went to school as a child, you learned certain things and then you discarded them when they became part of bigger things? Did you compartmentalize your learning so that you could put it together and live as a human being and know how to read, and know how to walk and talk and socialize and have a little math and be smart? that you didn't carry around the compartmentalization of what you learned. You went beyond it. I want you to think about what you don't know. <laughs> I want you to understand that in the future, the consciousness of humanity is going to broach the things that you know and don't know. In other words, it's going to move to places you haven't seen yet. You can't imagine them yet. And so you don't want to even go there yet. I want you to relax with belief. Let us say that a, a human being had lived their life in black and white. And it was a complex life and they liked it. There were so many shades of gray. There could be millions and they constructed everything they had with shades of gray. And suddenly, suddenly, the new energy appears, and they start hearing about color. And the first question they're going to have is, why should I care? Will it change the complexity of the shades of gray? Will I still be able to see black and white? <laughs> And these questions may be foolish because you know about color. You know the grandness of color. You know how it works with light. 
And you know that black and white can be beautiful, but you don't stay there forever. Color includes all of the black and white shades, all of them. It enhances the reality so much grander. But if you've lived in black and white, you don't know about color. And when it's presented, you may not even want to look at color. Now, I've given this before, but now I give it to you as an example of what spiritual evolution will look like. If you don't know what's coming and you're living in black and white, you're going to want to stay in black and white, dear ones. This is where you're going to be the most comfortable. So what do you do about that? You have a choice. You can wait for the young people and stay in black and white. You can also wait until the next time around when you're born in color. Or maybe, just maybe, you can help the planet by swallowing hard and saying, show me. I'm okay with it. Show me. I'm okay with it. It's time for courage. The Akash will open up as the human being starts to function better. And the portions that we have told you of your DNA, which is more quantum or multidimensional, starts to appear and work in tandem with your 3D parts. The evolution of humanity will be mostly in consciousness, and the spirituality will show itself as part of the consciousness, and it will start to include what you have learned in the past. Past life experience will cross over when you're born. It will be intuitive information. As a child, you will remember various things that never went away that you will need to grow faster. But the one that you're going to glean the first before anything else is wisdom. This has been the most elusive concept up to this point that would ever pass into one generation from another. And if you look at history, you will see for yourself it never passed at all. One generation never learned the lessons from the past, and the killing continued, the conquering continued, and the low energy of the earth stayed right where it was. This is what generated the prophecies that you have had for millennia. This is what generated the prophecy you had when so many of you were born. That by the time the precession of the equinoxes appeared, you will have again, again, destroyed yourselves but not partially, but completely, because you had learned how to kill in mass, how to spoil the planet completely for all life to come. And that was the prophecy, based upon an old energy that never passed its wisdom. And one of the things that's going to happen profoundly from this moment on is that one generation will pass the wisdom to the next, and the children will echo it and be born with it. And you will move forward instead of backward, and nothing stays the same. What happens when a civilization on a planet is in constant change based upon past wisdom showing them what works and what doesn't? You have a constantly changing reality. Every time you come home, the furniture is moved. Every time. We presented this in a different form. We presented it with different metaphors. We'll continue because that's what we do. You got to hear it many ways in order to finally absorb the fact that your evolution, dear human being, where you sit today, right now, hearing this, is going to be getting used to change. To accepting 
wanting, being one of those that says, it is good to change. There will come a time when you will look at consistency as an attribute of old energy. And if things stay the same too long, you'll say they're stagnating. You come home and the furniture didn't move and you'll be angry with the furniture. <laughs> that is evolution. This is where you're going. I just wanted to bring you this very brief, short message about an evolving human spirit and what it's going to take. Things aren't going to get better. They're going to get different. <laughs> And you are going to have to be one of those who is okay with it. What are you going to show the young people who are okay with it now as they come in in a new generation? Do you know the objection to what's going on in the Middle East at the moment that's tearing the hearts a part of humanity that is watching it and seeing only the sorrow? Do you know the objection from the young people in mass by the millions of this planet who are looking at it and are saying, not in our generation. Our children will not have this, and they'll do whatever it takes to keep it from happening. By the millions in the Middle East, young people, that you're not hearing from are saying they're tired of history driving current events. History is gone. It doesn't matter who did what to whom and when. It doesn't matter. What matters is getting connected and moving into a planet that eventually will forgive itself. Every human wants the same thing. You want to live in peace, you want schools, you want hospitals. You want to be happy? It's not that hard. And the, and the young people have come in with a wisdom that you didn't expect. They do not want what they see. And perhaps this war that I predicted would be here will be to wake up a generation to what they don't ever want to see again. And if that's the reason for the death, collectively you will say it was worth it. Because everyone's coming back to try it again. <laughs> everyone's coming back to try it again. This is the message of the day. Spiritual evolution is not going to be what you expect because you don't know what you don't know. But you're going to be all right if you accept you don't know what you don't know. And if you're all right with shifting times and energies that change and furniture that moves around when you're not home. <laughs> I think some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Given to you this day in love for a new human, and so it is.